Unit two or unit six, section two, parallelograms. And just like it says in the name, a parallelogram is going to have parallel parts. Okay. The definition of a parallelogram is a quadrilateral. Quad is four, so a quadrilateral four-sided figure in which both pairs of opposite sides Let's see if I can squeeze the word sides in there opposite sides are parallel okay both pairs of opposite sides are parallel So, other important things. Opposite sides are congruent. That's not. Which is equal in measure. Opposite angles. Are congruent. It's supposed to be an A. Consecutive, which means one after another. So the next one in a circle. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Means they add to 180. And lastly, diagonals. bisect each other. Diagonals is from non-consecutive angles, right? So across the figure, skipping one angle. They bisect each other. So if you draw a diagonal, it cuts the angle that they have in half. Let's look how to apply this idea. Each quadrilateral below is a parallelogram. They tell you it is. If you want to, mark it. This one's parallel to that one. This one is parallel to that one. Find the missing majors. Now they may not tell you it's a parallelogram, but they may mark it that opposite sides are parallel. Now you need to prove other things, right? If it is a parallelogram, then it must have congruent opposite sides. It must have congruent opposite angles. Opposite means they're across from each other, not consecutive. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Diagonals bisect each other. So let's find all the missing stuff. They want us to tell you how far it is from A to D. Well, if BC is 8, then A to D must be 8 because opposite sides are congruent. DC, on the other side, has to be 15. Because this is congruent to that, and this is congruent to that. So that must be 15. The measure of angle A, well, the measure of angle A is the next one over from D, so they're consecutive. So all I have to do is do 180 minus 68, and that would be 112. And then that means C is 112, and that means this is 68 because opposite angles are congruent. So A is 112 degrees. B is 68 degrees, which we could put an arc in here and an arc in here and do two arcs in there and do two arcs in there. It's a little messy with all the drawing, so I don't have to do the arcs if I write the numbers in. And then C is going to be 112 as well. Don't forget degrees. It works just like that. So go ahead and try number two. Give it a pause. Let's see what you can do. All right. Let's go. We know this is 29. We know that's 21. We know this is 127. We know 180 minus 127 is 53. 53 degrees, degrees, degrees. Now just mark it in. JK, 21. KL, 29. Angle J, 127 degrees. Angle K, 53 degrees. Angle M, also 53 degrees. Number three, they've drawn in diagonals this time. And what we know about diagonals is diagonals bisect each other. They cut each other in half. 
Okay. They also cut the angle. Actually, they don't cut the angle in half necessarily. That's not a thing. They just cut each other in half. That's better. Not the angles, just their length, right? So on a diagonal, I know that this side is equal to that side. And this side is equal to that side. So if UV is 7, then VS is also 7. So I can put 7 on there. RU is 18. That means ST is 18. So I can throw that on there. If RS is 27, then uh, UT is 27. So I can put that down here, 27. And they want V to T. Well, it tells me down at the bottom, if you see this little guy, RT is 30. So if R to T is 30, that means bisect cuts in half. Each side of this has to be 15, so I know VT is 15. Okay. And it should. Oh, it looks like it does, but that one doesn't for sure. Okay. But we can figure it out. Okay. So the measure of angle FED, right? They tell us here in number four, FED is 134. Well, if part of it is 71, then 134 minus 71 is 63. 63 degrees. And if we know that C to D and F to E are parallel and this line is cutting them, okay, or this line is cutting them, or that line is cutting them, or that line is cutting them, that line is cutting them, we can do all of these kinds of things inside this triangle in order to figure it out. Okay, use alternate interior angles there to help figure some of this stuff out, which would be very helpful for us. So, we got 71, we got 63. What else can we figure out because of what we know? Mm, let's see, let's work our way around this triangle just a little bit. Let's see if we got this one and we got that one and we got that diagonal. That's 71 and this is 71. We know that one for sure. Okay. Very good. What else can we know for sure? Let's see. I'm going to take off some of these lines here. I mean, that one's 71. We can keep a mark on it. All we got to do is brain our way through this. All right, so let's go back to our pen. We know that's 63. We know this one's 71. That's very good. Let's see. The whole piece is 71. What can we do there? Don't know the other side of that one yet. But do we have G, C, D as one of our things on here? D, of course not. Not one of the ones that we need. Oh, here's a fun thing. We do know that opposite sides are equal, right? So we know that this one has to be 63 because opposite angles are congruent. So we can do that, alternate interior angles. So we know D... E, C, that one is 63 degrees. Okay, good. We know F, C, E is also 63 degrees. And since we know that it is 63 degrees, we can figure out that other inside angle, which can help us figure stuff out. Plus, we know that consecutive angles are supplementary. So if we figure out what 71 plus 63 is, which should be, 134, and we take 180 minus 134. We know that the whole angle over here, angle uh, CFE, should equal 46. And if we take 46 and subtract 21, we get this piece is 25. So uh, let's see, EFG, where's that one? It's not on there, but 
we know that that one's 25. Opposite angles have to be congruent. So this is going to be 21 and this is going to be 25 as well. So now we can fill some of those bad boys in. Let's see, C, D, E, the whole thing was 46. We just figured that out because of consecutive angles being supplementary. E, C, D, we know is 71 degrees because of alternate interior angles. And D, F, E, let's see, D, F, E, we figured out was 25 degrees. And if we needed to, we could figure out those vertical angles in the middle because we know two of each in the triangle and we could figure out the third. Sometimes these take a little thinking, uh, putting together all of the rules that we know, but there is a way. All right, let's check out five. Given XY equals 15, okay, so XY is 15, and WX is 22, and ZX all the way across is 32. So that makes this 16 and 16. And WT is 10. And if that's 10, then this is 10. And the measure of angle WZY is 62. WZY, this whole angle out here is 62 degrees. So, and WXT is 27 degrees, okay? And the measure of angle ZWT, ZWT is 77 degrees. It's a seven, I promise, 77 degrees. Find all of the rest of this business. Okay, well, we can do, um, since WX, this guy extended, and ZY, that guy extended, are being cut by this one. We know that this angle is 77 degrees as well. WYX, is that on there? Let's see. Not one of the ones we need, but we'll need something from it in a minute. We know that this whole thing is 62 degrees. So we are able to figure out some of these pieces. So let's go with, uh, let's see. We know 62 minus 27. 62 minus 27 is gonna be 35. We know this piece is 35. And so we can start going with 35 degrees and 27 degrees. Start labeling all these bad boys in. Uh, we could say 180 minus 62 is the whole thing out here is 118 degrees. And since the whole thing out here, 118 minus 77, we know the other piece is 41 degrees. And so, got a whole bunch of those marks. So let's look. Z, W is going to be 15. Z, Y is going to be 22. T, X is 16. W, Y all the way across is going to be 20. And let's see, T, Z, Y from T to Z over to Y is 27 degrees, we figured out. X, Y, Z, X to Y to Z, the whole thing is 118 degrees. X, W, T, X, W, T, that's the opposite of this one over here. That'd be 41 degrees. And X, Y, T, X, Y to T, 77 degrees. Sometimes it's easier to just get into these diagrams and draw everything that you can find and know and then go back over and see which ones they've labeled and put in what they're worth than it is to try to like go down the line and go, oh, that one, because sometimes you need this one in order to do that one. So go ahead, take a pause, maybe a long pause, and try number six. Let's see what you do. All right, let's label what we got. G, H, F, G to H to F. It's 34. H, J, F, H, J, F, the big one, is 124. That's not a four. There we go. <coughs> and F, K, J, 
F K J 79. Ooh. So we know this is 79. And we can know those parts as well. Let's see. 180 minus 79. These is 101. That does not look like 101. One, zero, one. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see what else we can come up with here. We know that one's 34, and no, that one's 124. 124, no, clear. 180 minus 124. This whole thing's 56 degrees total. Minus 34 means that this is 22 degrees, and 22 degrees, and 34 degrees, because those are going to be opposite. The whole thing's 56 degrees. This is 124 degrees. All right, we know the inside part, so let's do 180 minus 79 minus 34. 67 is what goes in that one. And then let's do 180 minus 101 minus 22, and we get 57. All right, we got them all labeled. Let's plug them in. G, F, J. So from G to F to J, the big one, 56 degrees. F, G, H, the big one, 124 degrees. H, F, J, H to F to J is 34 degrees. H, K, J, H to K to J was 101 degrees. G, no, J to G to H was 67 degrees. F to G to J was 57 degrees. And then F, H, F to H to J was 22 degrees. And G to J to F, G to J to F was 67 degrees. All you have to do is follow the letters. Once you've got everything labeled, it's easy to plug them in and play. Now let's throw some algebra in there. I'll do one, then you pause and try one. I'll do one, you pause and try one. I'll do one, you pause and try one. And we'll keep that going until the end here. So, uh, what do I know about a parallelogram? Let's see. Now, we're assuming all of these are parallelograms, even though it doesn't say it and it's not marked, but it's the section about parallelograms, so they're parallel. What do we know about opposite sides? Well, they're congruent. So that means that 9x minus 25 has to equal 5x plus 7. Subtract my 5x. 4x minus 25 equals 7. Add 25. 4x equals 32, divide by 4, x equals 8. Am I done? Solve for x. I did, so I'm done. Just make sure it says solve for x and not find a side, like on 8 here that you're about to do. You actually have to find what it is to go from y to z. You have to plug the x in. That's what they're looking for. So you want to know what is y, z, right? Fill in the blank. You got to find x to do it. Take a pause, give it a try. Okay, here we go. It's algebra. Opposite sides are congruent. So 11x plus 1 equals 19x minus 31. I'm going to go this way because I like my x's to be positive. Now, I don't need the x equals 4. I need to plug it in. Now, you can either plug it in times 19 and subtract 31, or I can plug it in times 11, which is easy, 44, plus 1, which is 45. Plug it in that one. Okay. Oh, let's see. I need to erase a little bit right there. Uh, interesting. It takes the whole thing. Okay. If T V equals 74, T to V equals 74. Okay, well, what's half of 20 is 74? 74 by about 2 is 37. Bet that's going to come in handy. And it's easier to mark. This is 37. That's 37 because they bisect, cuts in half. W V 
is 4x plus 1. Solve for x. Well, right, just put them right next to each other. So it's 57 equals 7, 4x plus 1 minus 1. 56 equals 4x divided by 4. So x equals... Let's see, 8 would go 7 times, and so if we do half of 8 is 2, we got to double the 7, which is 14. Solve for x, right? Now, is that what I get? Do we think that's right? Let's see, wv is 4x plus 1, tv is 74. They get bisected. Ooh! I put 57, and that is supposed to be 37. That's what happens when you can't read people's handwriting. They write too small. So let's scratch that one, and let's say 37 equals 4x plus 1. So subtract 1. 36 equals 4x divided by 4, divided by 4. So x equals 9. That's better. Not that one. Helps if you write it down correctly. Half of 74 is not 57. It's 37. Be careful. Go ahead and give it a pause. Try the next one on your own. See what you come up with. If NS is 2x plus 7 and SQ is 5x minus 23, find NQ. So NQ equals what? Now that's what I've got to solve for. Well, those are bisected pieces, so they're equal to each other. So 2x plus 7 equals 5x minus 23. I'm going to take 2x this way by subtracting both sides because I like my x's to be positive. That's a 3. Add 23. 30 equals 3x. Divide by 3. x equals 10. x is not what I need. I need n q. So n to q is all the way across. So if I find one of them, I just double it. So... 2 times 10 plus 7 is 20 plus 7, which is 27. And I'm going to go times 2. 2, 20 times 2 is 40. 7 times 2 is 14. So that should be 54. That's what I need there for NQ. So that was all sidey stuff and lengthy stuff. Now let's look at angly stuff. Find the measure of angle B. So we need the measure of angle B equals what? Well, B is next to A and next to C, so it's supplementary. So I'm going to find A, and I'm going to subtract that from 180. That'll give me B. But in order to find A, I need X. And A and C are opposite angles. In a parallelogram, that means they're congruent. So 6X minus 15 equals 4X plus 11 minus 4X. 2x minus 15 equals 11. Add 15. 2x equals 26. Divided by 2, x equals 13. We are not done. Because x equals 13, we can plug it in for one of these and solve. I'm going to plug it into the 4x plus 11 one. So 4 times 13 plus 11. See, 4 times 10 is 40, 4 times 3 is 12, that's 52 plus 11, so that's 63. And we got to do 180 minus 63, bar our cheat and steal, 10 minus 3 is 7, 7 minus 6 is 1, bring down the 1, 117 degrees is the measure of angle B. Number 12, we're going to find the measure of angle R. Measure of angle R, which is equal to P. So if you find X and you plug it in for P, you know what R is. So give it a try. Okay, here we go. Uh, these are supplementary. So 3X plus 5 plus 8X minus 12 equals 180. 11x minus 7 equals 107. I think it's 7. Looks like 7. Yeah. 180. Add 7. 
11x equals 187 divided by 11. Let's see, 187 divided by 11. 17 times, yay, x equals 17. That's not our answer. We're looking for r, so we're going to plug it into p. So 3 times 17 plus 5. 3 times 17, 3 times 10 is 30, and 3 times 7 is 21. 30 plus 21 is 51 plus 5 equals 56. Angle r is, angle, is 56 degrees. Now let's look at 13. 13, the measure of angle KLH equals 134 degrees. So from K to L to H is 134 degrees here at that corner. Solve for X. Well, that's fun. We're going to need to know some stuff. Well, we got to figure out what angle LHN is. We need this one. Because that one, this one, and this one are congruent. And I know they're congruent because this is a parallel line to this parallel line, and they're being cut by that transversal, and alternate interior angles are congruent. So I need to figure out what that little piece is. And to know that, I need to know the big angle over there. And those are supplementary. So 180, that's 480, hello. 180 minus 134, that's 64. 180 minus 134 is 46 degrees total. Minus 25 degrees gives me 21. So I know 21 is equal to 4x plus 9 because of alternate interior angles. This is why we learned that parallel line stuff last semester. Comes in handy in parallelograms. Let's solve for x. Minus 9. Uh, it would be 12 equals 4x divided by 4, x equals 3. Did we have to solve for x? Ooh, we did have to solve for x. We done. Didn't have to plug it in or nothing. Because we already know what it equals. It equals 21. So, let's look at 14. Pause it, give it a try. Let's see what you can come up with. If the measure of angle ABC is 115, that's this guy here, and the measure of angle, find the measure of angle ADB. Measure of angle ADB equals fill in the blank. Okay, ADB. Oh, the bad part is, is that ADC would be easy at 115, but we're going to have to cut that little piece down. Okay, well... The interesting thing is that this is a parallel line, and that is a parallel line, and that is a transversal, and that doesn't help me too much. Except that if I knew what this piece was, it's the same as this piece is the same as that piece, alternate interior angles. So I have to find out that piece. So, we have to solve for x. Let's see, how can we solve for x? Well, let's see, did we find out? We know the whole thing is 115. And we know that alternate interior angles are congruent, so I could just say that this is 6x minus 11. And so now I have the whole 4x plus 6 plus 6x minus 11 equals 115. And I can solve for that. So 4x and 6x is 10x. 6 minus 11 is negative 5 equals 115. Let's add 5. 10x equals 120 divided by 10. x equals... 12. If we don't need x, we got to plug it in. So we're going to do 6 times 12 minus 11. 6 times 12 is 72. Minus 11 is going to be 61. And we're talking about degrees right now, so it'll be 61 degrees. And that is what we do 
if you notice, we're putting in a lot of things that we've learned in the past. So if you haven't been keeping up, it does make this very difficult. Brush up on all of those things. Start thinking about alternate interior angles that you can prove. Now notice that we didn't do this angle and that angle. And that's because they're cut by a line that's not the transversal. And so we can't necessarily say that they are equal. They should be equal, and we should be able to drop that down in that spot. And we eventually will learn that we can do that. And that's because we have different uh, parallel lines. This parallel line and that parallel line cut by that transversal now makes this one equal to that one. So you can actually put those in there, but not from the lines that we were looking at. You have to look at a different set of lines, but you can make them equal to each other. So alternating uh, diagonal angles are going to be congruent to each other all of the time. Okay.